In this last video of the Adobe Photoshop for newbies, I'm going to show you how to create a footer and a background from what we just created for the mini site. So we're almost done. In fact, I'll probably do it in less than six minutes. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is create a footer. Footer is very similar to the header. So since we've already created the header, all we have to do is just move things around, have the footer there. The footer is going to have about a lesser height. So it's going to be, say, a little smaller than half of the height of the header. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the header is about 700 by 150. What we're looking at is we want it to be about this size. The only difference between the header and the footer is that the layout might be different. You might have the images in different locations. And generally you have something like your domain name, Flu Prevention 101, if that's the case, or whatever the name is, .com, and put a copyright sign at the bottom. So with the footer, I'm going to have the same width, which is 700, and less than half, so about 150. So we'll do less than 150 divided by 2, which comes out to be 75. And we'll do something smaller than that, so we'll make the height about 60. And there we go. So we can just play around with it and move things around just like the header. But the one thing you want to make sure you have is the copyright information at the bottom left hand corner or wherever you decide to put it. Once we do that, we'll save it as the footer and we'll create the background. Now that I have shown you how to create a footer, let's go ahead and create a background design. I'll get a file, get a new, and I'm going to make the size of the width and height 395 and 175. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so that you can see it better. One thing to note about backgrounds is when you create them, the image or the text on it is going to look like a watermark. You're, you want to make it so that people faintly see it. They can barely see it, but not too much as far as being able to see it. Because here's why. What happens is if they are able to see the background too much, then it starts to distract them. Their eyes go from the sales copy to that area. We And we don't want that. We want them to glance at it, look nice, and that's it. What I liked about my DVD cover was this image here and this text here. What I'm going to do for the sake of saving time and to show you how you can save time is find out something you like. Okay, I liked this thing here. And it's pretty simple. So what I'll do is transfer this from here to the background image. But what I'm going to do is make it slanted. It's not going to be horizontally straight. It's going to be slanted from here up to here. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and transfer that information and those graphics and text and color over here. Okay, great. So that was easy enough, right? So simply go here as you can see here pick the layer and drag it from here to here we'll move that aside a bit so you can see what it looks like now to make it look like a watermark what we're going to do is we're going to take the background which is a red background and we'll pull it to the front we'll change the opacity so that it's clear so you can actually see it but you can see it very little so I'm going to drag that background layer in here, as you can see here, but I'm going to change the opacity from 100% down. And you want to have something that you're confident that it looks good with. Pink might not be the best color for the situation. If that's not the case, then what I'm going to do is pick this bucket, paint bucket tool here, and pick and choose a darker color. and use that to fill it in. Now what I want to do is I want to clump it together. So 
what I could do is move these layers together as close as I can get them together. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to move this from this point to this point. So what I can do is use the free transform feature here. And once we're satisfied, we can save that as for web goes as a JPEG file. And that's it. Now that we're done with creating the mini site, let's take a look at it as a whole. So starting from the top, we have our header. We've created our DVD e-cover. This one's uh, 450 width. This one is 250 in size. Here's our footer and here's our background. So if you've reached the end of this video series for Adobe Photoshop for newbies in creation of mini sites, then you should give yourself a round of applause because now you know how to create headers, e-covers, footers, and backgrounds by yourself. And not only that, you understand a lot of graphic design material that you can take back later on to different designs other than just mini site designs.